Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and we're doing something today that I have never done before, a Kickstarter preview. I'm going to show you a Solitaire game that will be on Kickstarter at the end of March, Unbroken, designed by Artem Safarov and published by Altima Games. When Artem got in touch with me and asked if I would be willing to do a Kickstarter preview, I actually had to think about it for a minute. I have never done one before, and this is bringing something new to my blog and to my channel. But I chose to film this overview and let's play of Unbroken because I really like the game, and I actually intend to back the project with my own money when it comes to Kickstarter next month. Unbroken is a game in which you have participated in a dungeon crawl, but unsuccessfully. The rest of your party has perished, and you are alone in the depths of a hostile dungeon with only your bare hands and your wits to rely on. To escape and get home, you will need to prepare for and then defeat four increasingly difficult monsters. Survive them all and you win. Fail in your quest and you join your friends in their dungeony grave. There are currently four characters to choose from and each has special abilities that may help you on your journey. For this game, I'm going to be trying out the Sneak, who is apparently so sneaky that he managed to survive when all of his friends did not. I'll begin the game with 13 small effort, as opposed to medium and large effort. And I'm also going to begin with seven time. This is the amount of time that I have to prepare before the first level boss fight. One of the things that I really like about Unbroken is its use of resources. The most important one you have is effort. This represents your energy and your will to get things done, and without it, you die. Your other key resource is time. Before each boss encounter, you have a limited amount of time to spend preparing for battle. Once you start to get low on time, you have a choice. Will you choose to attack the monster and have the initiative in battle? Or will you spend all of your time trying to maximize your preparation, but get ambushed and start your fight at a bit of a disadvantage? Or, as we're going to see, you have a third option. In some cases, you can sneak by a monster instead of engaging it in head-on combat. And this strategy is going to cost you rewards and resources, but it also allows you to take more recovery time if that's what your character needs. Throughout your dungeon adventuring, you're also going to manage a few more resources. One of those is cunning, which can be very helpful when you're trying to sneak by a monster. You also have metal and wood, which are used to craft weapons. As you can see, you start with your bare hands, and I mean, unless you want to fight an ogre with your bare hands, this is something you ought to be thinking about. There's food, because at the end of each round, you're in a dungeon, but you can still starve to death in there. So you actually need to feed yourself um, an amount of food that's commensurate with the level that you're on. And there's treasure. Treasure doesn't actively do too much for you in the game, but it does get you points afterwards if you survive. So if you want to show off what an awesome dungeon survivor you are, you want to have a lot of treasure at the end of the game to maximize your score but I'm still in the survival figured out phase, so I'm not gonna be worrying too much about treasure on this playthrough. Making all these different resources work together and managing them all at the same time is actually what makes Unbroken so interesting. This game is highly unforgiving and every last decision you make affects whether or not you're ultimately going to emerge victorious, or at least whether you're gonna survive as long as you possibly can. So let's see how gameplay works. So this turn is going to begin with what's called a travel phase, and I'm going to get a preparation step, a decision step, and an exploration step. So preparation just means taking any number of general or character actions that I can afford or want to take. The decision step uh, allows me to decide whether I am ready to battle a monster or not. This turn, the answer is definitely no. And if I decide not to battle a monster, I go into what's called the exploration step, where I draw cards off of the encounter deck and choose to resolve one. Here's a closer look at the general actions that I can take. The first three, focus, inspiration, and plan, basically involve converting effort into other types of effort or into cunning. So I can spend four small effort to gain a medium effort, two medium effort to gain a large effort, or four medium effort to gain a cunning. I can also spend effort to reveal extra exploration cards if there's something in particular I'm looking for. I can scout to reveal the monster that I'm going to battle um, in this particular level. 
or I can craft. And there is specific information about upgrades that are possible for me based on the weapon card that I currently have. I'm also playing a sneak who has a couple of special abilities that are unique to him. In this level, since I'm level one, I can only use one of these abilities at any point during the level. So I'm gonna hang on as long as I can, but I'm flexible. So when I gain a new skill, I can draw an extra card to pick from. You gain a skill after you defeat a monster and it helps you towards defeating the next one. I can take a travel action, um, which is take a peek. I can reveal an extra card during the exploration step. So if I'm trying to burn through cards looking for a specific resource, that might help me. Or I can dodge. So during combat, after a monster rolls, I can spend an effort to reduce that roll by one. So each monster will roll a die against you that has different consequences, and this will allow me to take something less dire over something that is maybe more damaging to me. So let's have a preparation step. I think all I really want to do during this prep is I do want to scout. I want to know what I'm confronting so I can do the best planning possible. So it's going to cost me one time. We're down to six time now and one small effort, which brings me down to 12. Now I'm going to get to scout out which monster we're going to fight. Now to figure out which monster you're going to confront, you just roll a die and you pull a monster from the deck based on the result. So I rolled a two. I'm going to find the level one monsters and grab the one that has a two on it. So in this case, it means I'm going to be fighting a gibberling. So we can just go ahead and put him here. So let's take a quick look at what we can learn about our first boss fight. We know that the gibberling has two health. We know that if he ambushes us, we're gonna gain a paranoid condition for the next level, which we do not want. If I don't want to fight him and I wanna be tricky, I can spend three time, but we are not gonna do that this time. He forces me to gain the panicked condition for the next level, which you will see soon. And here are his combat actions. So depending on what he rolls, he will do different things to me in combat. And here is the reward for defeating him. A fine reward if I do say so myself. So let's put him to the side and prepare to defeat him. There are no other general actions that I really wanna take at this moment. What I do want is I wanna explore so I can see if I can get a few resources. I've got an eye towards improving my weapon, so I'd like to upgrade to either a club or a knife, depending on what resources come my way. I'd also maybe like to get some food so that I can eat at the end of this turn. And I have about six time to try to do something in. So let's see how it goes. So during the exploration phase, you draw two encounter cards, see what's on them, and you can choose one action. So here I can spend one time to spend one small effort and gain a cunning. I can spend one time to spend a medium effort, which I do not have, to gain a large effort, or I could choose to rest for this time and gain a small effort for each time listed on the card. So I don't have a medium effort, so we're just gonna go ahead and discard this one. So now I can either rest and spend one time and get one small effort, or I can spend one small effort to gain a cunning. I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and spend an effort to gain a cunning because there's always a time when that comes in handy and that costs us one time. So now we go back to the general preparation phase so I can do it all again. There are no general actions that I wanna take right now. I just wanna keep working through the exploration deck. So we are gonna take another couple of encounters and see what we get. Interesting. Okay, so this time I can either spend one wood to gain one large effort, but I don't have a wood, so that's fine. Or I can spend two time and nothing else to get a piece of metal. I'm very interested in getting this metal because it helps me move towards upgrading to a knife, which is something that interests me greatly. So let's go ahead and spend the two time Oof, running out of time so quickly. All right, and then let's take a metal. All right, so now that I have a metal, I'm a little bit closer to being able to upgrade, uh, but I'm going to need a medium effort and two time to do so. So right now, I don't have enough time to do this. I need to make sure this gibberling does not ambush me. So I can take a risk. I have three time left. Once this time hits zero, I'm gonna get ambushed. 
Even if you've already discovered the monster, they ambush you when you run out of time. It's kind of like I scattered them out and I can hear them like creeping down the halls of the dungeon around me, but it's up to me to find him first or else he will find me, even if I already know what he is. But let's take a risk. Let's pull two more exploration cards. Woof. Okay, so this would have been cool, except that I really don't have four time, nor do I have the effort for it. So this goes in the discard. This is perfect. I can spend one time and one effort to gain a food, which means I'm going to be able to feed myself, hopefully, at the end of this round. So we'll spend one effort, one time, and gain one food. So now I only have this one time left. It is not wise, I think, at this point to, um, to try to risk finding another one-time card, I can end up getting ambushed. So we are going to move into the combat round. We are gonna attack this gibberling and see what we can do about him. So now we are ready to fight. The first thing you do when you enter a boss combat round is you move your time tracker back to the level that will be the next level that you're on. So I was on one, now I'm moving my counter to two. So I'll have a little bit more time for next time, but some monsters, including this gibberling, can cost you time off your next round if combat rolls go badly. So the first step going into actual combat is called the trickery step. So as we talked about, trickery means I have to spend three time if I want to bypass the gibberling. However, I don't really want to do that. I, time is precious and I think I can beat him pretty quickly. So that is really not the path I want to take. But if I wanted to bypass him, I would spend three time and do so right now and he would just go away and there would be no consequences for fighting him, but I also wouldn't get any rewards. Now, since I'm the one who attacked first, I didn't let myself get ambushed, I have a choice. I can either attack the monster or I can take an action. So if I wanted to try to upgrade my weapon in the midst of battle, I would have that opportunity, but the monster would be attacking me while I did that, which is really not the best of options. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna attack this dude so I can spend two small effort to inflict one damage. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. He starts at two. Now he's gonna go down to one. And so unfortunately he's not dead yet. So now the gibberling gets to take a roll and see what he can do to me. So let's see what he does. A two. So he wounds me and I lose one small effort. It's not great, but there are certainly worse things in this world, especially because now it is my turn again, and I'm just going to hit him again for another two small effort, and his health drops to zero. The Ghibli is now defeated. But, I mean, that may have seemed easy, but he was a level one monster. Trust me, they get so much worse. So now that this Ghibli is dead, I get some rewards. I'm gonna get one treasure. I'm gonna get two extra time. That's never a bad thing and I'm gonna get two small effort. I also have to do a feeding phase. So I have to eat one food uh, commensurate with my level or else I will either lose small effort or if I lose all of my effort, I can starve to death in here. So fortunately I'm on level one, I have one food. So I will go down to zero food and eating food has gotten me a little bit of energy. So I will actually go up one more small effort for having eaten. Next round, I'm going to need two food in order to make it through the round without taking damage. So that's something that I should be thinking about. So we've gotten all these rewards, but the best reward is yet to come. And because I'm a sneak, I'm going to use my flexible skill. So at the end of, of combat, when you defeat a monster, you get to draw two skill cards. And since I'm a sneak, I can spend this because I haven't spent it all level to gain a new skill. When I gain a new skill, I can draw plus one card to pick from. So let's draw three cards and see which one that we would like to have as our skill. All right, the first one is perfect memory. Once per level, you may take an encounter card of your choice from the discard pile instead of drawing from the top of the deck when exploring. Okay, so if there's an encounter that I particularly liked, I can go dig back through and get it back if it's been discarded. That's cool. Poison Mastery. This skill bypasses armor. Ooh, so if there's an armored monster that I want to attack and I haven't destroyed all of its armor yet, I can spin Cunning in order to do damage to it. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I like that. 
Sacrifice, another combat action. If I spend one treasure and one small effort, I can do a wound for two, and this skill also bypasses armor. Ooh, these are cool. All right, I wanna try Poison Mastery, I think, because being able to wound past armor is really good, and these are some good wound totals, so if I can pick up Cunning during the next few levels during prep, I can do a lot of damage to higher level monsters, even the ones that have armor on. I think that's great, so that's what we're gonna take. So these will go off to the side, and the rest of the skills will wait for us for an after our next combat. So now we are all set up for level two. Um, Unfortunately, because if you guys recall, the gibberling caused me to gain a condition, the panicked condition for the next level. I am now panicked. And what the consequence of that is for me is that I will now have to reveal one less encounter card during the exploration step. So remember how I had been drawing two? Now I only get to draw one. Not the best. So now we are gonna begin a brand new travel step. So the first thing I need to ask myself is what do I want to do in terms of preparation? So I want to move towards being able to upgrade my bare hands to a knife. I think that's a good idea. I'm also interested in scouting for the next monster. So I'm going to need a medium effort and some time in order to upgrade to a knife. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and spend four small effort to gain the medium effort that I'm going to need to do that. Then I am going to, you can do as many general actions as you can afford, by the way, which is why I'm doing this. Uh, then you can, I'm going to spend my metal and I'm going to spend my medium effort and two time in order to upgrade this weapon to a knife. So I get to take this away and there's actually a deck of weapons. So you can just pull your upgraded weapons out. And now, ta-da, I'm back to having a knife. So that's pretty good. Um, so we'll definitely do a little bit better, hopefully, the next round. So this weapon has the ability to break armor if we need to. It can do damage for a little bit cheaper than the bare hands could. If you recall, bare hands, it took two efforts to do one damage. Now it only takes one. And then it's one medium effort and two small efforts to do three, as opposed to two medium efforts. And then it still takes a lot, but you can actually do up to five damage with this weapon, which is an improvement over the last one. I think I'm also just going to go ahead and blow my effort now so I can rest on my encounter card turns and two time to scout because I want to know what monster we're going to be dealing with. So let's give it a roll and see. A five. Let's see what that gets us. So that die roll of five means that we are going to fight a gremlin. Ugh. So he only has two health, but he's really annoying to fight. He has a special. If you have any treasure, and we do from the last fight, but the gremlin attacks once before combat, gains plus one to all combat rolls, and all attacks cost an extra cunning. You might have noticed that cunning is in somewhat short supply, so Basically, in order to even try to attack him, you're going to need to gain an extra resource that can cost you pretty dear. The good news for me, however, is that I have Poison Mastery. If I work on gaining enough cunning over the course of this turn, I can use this skill one time and kill him. So I think we're going to actually go ahead and plan to try to defeat him. But um, if I did not have this card, I think it would be a much taller order. So I'm very, very glad that I picked up this particular skill during this round. So now we need to focus on making sure that I get a little more cunning, some small effort because I'm running low on that, and I need to make sure that I have enough food to finish out this round without dying. But the gremlin, we see you. We are coming your way, buddy. So we'll just let this dude work over here for now and we will see what happens on our exploration step. So don't forget, I have the panicked condition. So I reveal one less encounter card to a minimum of one during the exploration step. If I want to, I can uh, reveal plus one card during the, during the step as a travel action, but I'm not really sure I'm ready to do that yet. So I don't wanna give these up if I can dodge and pick from extra skills. So that'll be an emergency thing if our prep is going really badly. Right now we have 10 time and only two effort. We gotta like get some of this back up. 
So let's draw an encounter. Hmm. That's a tough choice for me right now. So I can either rest and get one small effort, or I can spend a small effort to gain a medium one. I'm gonna live dangerously. Let's do it. Because a medium effort for that cheap is a good thing. We're gonna do it. All right, so that was one card. Let's just keep drawing them until we run out of time. I don't have any general actions I wanna do right now. In order to upgrade the knife, I need wood, metal, and an uh, effort to get to a spear, or I need a medium effort, three metal, and two time to get a sword. It's a, kind of a lot of resources. So let's see what we can manage. Okay. Ooh, four time. Spend a small effort to gain two food. Suspicious mushrooms, that's hilarious. Okay, so I can spend my effort down to zero. It's just that if I'm asked to spend more, we're gonna have a problem. Let's do it. Let's do it. No risk, no reward, right? Four, three, two, one. So I now have enough food to survive the round. Also, when you eat food, you can gain um, effort. So. Hopefully I'll live long enough for that to pay me back. Okay, let's draw one more. Ooh, that's not bad at all. Spend two time to gain a cunning. I actually definitely want to do that because that is probably gonna save my bacon in this next fight. Because now I have enough cunning to use this skill, this combat action, to kill the gremlin in a one shot. So that's really not a bad idea for me. All right, so now we've got a couple time left. Let's see what we can do. All right, let's pull one more. Please don't be three. Yes, okay, awesome. So I'm just gonna rest on this turn. So rather than spend anything and get extra cards, I'm just gonna like take a small effort, which I kind of need. So I'm dangerously low in effort right now, which would be a lot more of a problem, except that I know that I'm going to be able to take out the gremlin, and I also know that I have enough food to survive this level, and that that's gonna give me a little bit more effort too. So normally, this would be a disaster, but given the skill that I pulled and the resources that I was able to get, we're actually doing pretty good. So, we don't have, this lost us the time, we don't have enough time left to risk keep pulling cards off, the, off of the exploration deck, so we're gonna just go ahead and attack this gremlin. And the good news is that I get to attack him first. All right, it is gremlin fighting time and I have a choice to make. I can either try to sneak past this gremlin using trickery, so I can use my one treasure and one of my cunning to go by without a fight, or we can fight him and hopefully gain some rewards. Um, he does have a special, and what that means is that if I have any treasure, which I do, the gremlin attacks once before combat, gains plus one to all combat rolls, and all attacks cost plus one cunning. So do we want to risk it, or do we want to sneak by? You know what? Let's fight. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust our time up to the level three time. And then the gremlin's going to attack us first because he just wants us for our treasure. How cruel. So let's see what he does. All right. So he's rolled a three. Normally that would mean that we lose one effort, but we don't. Because he gains plus one all combat rolls, he's gonna disarm us. We have to downgrade our weapon to bare hands for two turns. I'm gonna take that. You know why? Because that's really not too bad for me. Um, that is gonna work out great, in fact, because we aren't going to be attacking him with our bare hands. We're going to be using our poison mastery skill. So what that means is I'm gonna spend my two cunning on my turn we're gonna wound him for three. So the goblin is already gone and we have succeeded in our fight with him, the gremlin that is. So we're gonna lose our panics condition, that turn is now entirely over, and we're gonna get some rewards. So we get a treasure, a medium effort, and a cunning, all of which are going to come in pretty handy. Uh, we will also pick up a new skill, but I wanna handle food first just because otherwise I'll forget. So we are at level two, so we spend one food, one effort, two food, two effort. So we've got some effort back. And now we can draw for another skill. All right, so let's draw some skill cards and see what we get. The first one, cautious. 
At the beginning of each level, you may immediately gain the afraid condition to gain time equal to the current level. Oh, by the way, I should have set my time back. We are at time three, level three time right now. Okay, let's have a look at what the afraid condition is so we know what that actually means. All right, so the afraid condition means that you gain one less um, effort when you rest. Uh, I don't know about that. All right, let's take another skill and see what we get. Shadow. Ignore all worn effects in combat. Ignore the time cost of scouting and gain effort when scouting. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Okay. Let's see the third one. Inventive. Your planning general action is now spend three small effort to gain a cunning. Using this action in combat allows you to immediately take another action. Ooh. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay. So our current general action is four um, small efforts make a cunning. And I am currently collecting that particular attribute in order to and take advantage of my poison mastery. As much as I really like shadow, I think that seems really cool since I do like to scout, I'm gonna take this because I need to get as many cunning as I can in order to do as maximum damage with this. Also, the turns are over, so this bare hands goes away and I'm back to having a knife. So now I have a couple new skills and um, we will go on to the next level, level three. All right, so my big goals right now are maybe seeing if we can get enough of everything to scout because that's pretty good. We need some effort, we need some cunning, and we need some food. So, okay, general actions right now, do I want to scout or not is the real question. Oh, and I'd really like to get some wood, metal, and effort to upgrade to a spear at least. We'll see if anything happens that's going to help me with that. Okay. Um, you know what? As much as I want to hang on to this cunning, I, I, I want to scout. So we're going to spend one cunning and we're going to spend one time in order to do that. I think it's important. If I can know what's coming, I want to. Okay, we got a three. So let's see what three is in the level three boss fights. All right, so apparently I rolled for a knoll. This looks pretty horrible, actually. So his ambush is that he attacks twice in every round of combat. That would be really, really bad. To trick him, I need treasure, a piece of wood, and a piece of metal. I don't have wood or metal, and I don't know if I'm going to find it, so we're just gonna have to prepare to fight this dude. His special is that the power of attacks three plus is halved. So any big attacks that I land on him, like it's gonna take at least three rounds to knock this dude out. Um, and let's see. So at least his combat actions aren't the worst. Okay, there are worse things and you get some pretty good rewards for beating him. So maybe it won't be so bad. I guess we'll find out. So the good news about this null is that my poison mastery is going to be able to bypass his special. So our goal of this turn is to get as much cunning as we possibly can. So let's go for it. I've taken my general actions that I can afford right now. So let's draw some encounter cards and we can draw two again because we are no longer panicked. Yes. All right, let's see. Okay, I don't even have one wood, so that's not gonna happen. I can spend three to gain four. Ooh, that's good. So I spent three time and let's pick up four small effort. That is, a, that is a rest well taken, excellent. And we still have about 11 time to prepare. So let's see what we get. Okay, so I can spend metal to get some effort, which would have been good if I had it, honestly, but I don't. I can spend two time to gain three more small effort. I'm gonna take that. I'm absolutely taking that. One, two, three. Okay, so we're up to 10 small effort. That's not bad, especially since we can convert a bunch of it into cunning if we don't get some. Hopefully that happens soon. Okay, so I can spend to reveal extra cards. I'm not really interested. Or, oh yes, perfect, perfect. I can spend three time. We're running a little on time, but that's okay. We're gonna spend this effort to pick up 
to cutting. Good. All right, so we definitely still have more time, so let's draw a couple more encounter cards. Okay, sadly, I don't have a knife. I'd really like to get some more stuff, but it's just not gonna happen right now. I can spend one time to gain two effort. That's definitely well spent. I can take general actions before all these explorations, but what I'm doing is I'm kind of seeing like what resources I end up with, and then I'm gonna take a bunch of general actions before I decide to fight so that I can make all of the cunning that I think I need. Okay, so let's draw two more. Okay, I don't have a medium effort. I've gone like really low effort because I'm getting dependent on my poison mastery, but that's okay. I'm gonna spend two time to pick up a food. That's definitely a good choice. Okay, and I definitely wanna go one more. The odds of me pulling cards that are that high, I think are pretty low. So let's just see what we get. Okay, so I can spend treasure to gain a bunch of effort, or I can spend nothing to gain a treasure. I really want to survive this game. Let's spend a treasure. And it costs us no time either. One, two, three, four. That's some good effort right there. So let's pull two more. So the preparation phase, we're gonna just not do any actions this time. We're gonna choose not to encounter the monster. We're gonna draw one more set of two cards. And then in the next prep phase, we're gonna prep and we're gonna hop in and attack the monster. Ooh, this worked out really nice. Sadly, I don't have enough time for this. That would be really cool. But I can spin to, to gain a food, which is great. I'm level three right now, so I only have two food, but I think we're gonna be able to make this work. So now I'm in my last preparation phase before I go into battling the monster because I'm going to prep and then I'm going to choose to encounter that null because I do not want to get ambushed. That is a horrible idea. So I have two cunning now. In an ideal world, I would have like six so that I could go after him with my poison mastery twice. Wait, I do have medium effort, okay. Here's what I think I can do. Hmm, okay. Okay. So let's figure out how much of this effort we wanna spend down to get some cunning. Definitely three. So that's one big attack. I'd have to spend nine to get to the point where I could kill him in two hits. Is that something that I really want to do? I'm gonna say no, but I am gonna spend six to get two more. So that way two of my hits against the monster could be a three and a five for eight, and then I only have to spend one more effort to get him for nine. So I think that that is probably my smartest play. I'm not going with as much small effort as I, was, as I would like, but we can, we can work with this, I think. Okay, so we've done our general actions. Now we are going into the part where we choose whether to explore or to confront. And our choice is to confront. We are gonna come at this null. All right, it is null fight time. And what I'm gonna do first is since I get to go first, I'm gonna use my combat action. I'm gonna spend three cunning and hit him for five. So he starts with nine health. He's got a lot of way to go for me to get rid of him. So let's spend four, three, two, and we'll knock him down. One, two, three, four, five. So he has four health left. Not bad, it's a good first hit. But let's see if we can keep going with that. Now he's gonna roll to try to get us. He rolled a two. So I don't really want to downgrade my weapon, just I need it back. Well, it says downgrade weapon to bare hands for one turn. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and take that. One turn, I can do one turn. I can get you no matter what, little null. All right, so we're on my turn and I have bare hands right now, but that's okay because I wanna use my combat action again. I'm gonna spin down to the, the last two cunning that I have to do him three damage. So he has one life left, just one. Come on, we gotta get him. All right, so he's gonna try to hit us back and let's see what he rolls. Oh, also, 
Good practice dictates that I should set my time up to the level four time. So if I lose time, I lose time off of that level. So sorry about that. So let's see what he does. A six, steel. So I guess I'm gonna lose my treasure, but that sucks. But there are worse things in this world, I suppose. I'm not that materialistic, I just wanna live. So now I'm going to get my knife back because the turn is over. And I'm going to spend one effort to stab him, bring him down to zero and defeat him. The knoll is done, we got him. So I'm going to get one metal, one treasure, one wood, one food, which puts me up to enough food to make it through this turn. That's great. A cunning and a small effort. So I got like a little array of exciting awards. I'm also going to have to do the, I can reveal the top cards of the skill deck. So let's see what we get. I'm gonna go ahead and spend one of my special abilities to go ahead and draw three cards instead of two because it's worked out really well for me so far. So our first skill, Awareness. Ignore all steel effects in combat and spend two small effort to ignore the monster's ambush effect. Maybe. Outdoorsman. I can spend some resources, a bunch of which I just got. Ooh. To gain a whole bunch of effort. So that's pretty cool, maybe. Or Resistant. Once per turn, monster turn, when combat action would cause you to gain a condition, you can gain an effort and subtract one from the combat action roll. Hmm. I think I'm gonna roll with Outdoorsman. If I can pick up a food, that is a lot of effort, which could be really, really helpful against a level four monster. Especially if you don't get as much cunning as we would've liked. So let's go ahead and do that. That is what we'll take. Now we're gonna do the feed step. So what that means is that, I mean, I need to eat. So we are going to go down one food for level one, down one more food, get an effort, and down a third food and gain another effort. Level three, three foods, I gained three small effort. So that was actually a pretty good feeding turn. That was excellent. So now this knoll is defeated and we are gonna go on to level four, the deadliest of all levels. All right, guys, let's get ready for level four. I'm gonna fill up my little action thing. So this is our last level. We're gonna see if we can get out of this dungeon alive. Can we do it? Well, I'm starting on an okay position, especially this poison mastery skill is the bomb.com. I really like it. All right, so we are going to need to see if we wanna take any general actions. Do I? You know what? Yeah. I do want to take a general action. I do want to scout. It involves giving, a, giving up a cunning, sadly, but I like to be prepared. We're going to spend two effort on that, and we are also going to spend two time. So we have 16 time left to prepare, and we're going to see what beast it is that we are going to confront in our final encounter in this dungeon. A four. Well, let's figure out what a level four, number four is. So it turns out that to get out of here, we are going to be fighting a troll. He has 13 health. I'm happy to announce, however, that he has no armor. So that's something we don't have to work through too much. Um, ambush, let's avoid that, shall we? The troll heals one wound before each of his turns. So we're gonna have to make sure we're not just like hitting him by one and hoping that that works. We're gonna have to make sure there's, there's some big attacks. It looks like, however, a lot of this is about losing effort. So if I go into fighting him with as much effort and cunning as I can possibly manage, I think we're gonna be okay. I think, maybe. So we're gonna have to do our very best with that, but we're gonna spend the next amount of our time preparing to fight this troll. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so let's do a little exploration now that we've done our general action. Uh, we'll see what we need. So let's pick up a couple of encounter cards. Okay, so spend an effort, gain a food, or spend a large effort and get a bunch of stuff. This would be cool, except that I don't have a large effort. So that's just too bad for me. We are gonna spend one time and one small effort to get a food because it's really never a bad thing to have it. Okay, do I wanna take any general actions? No. Do I wanna encounter the troll? Nope, so I want to encounter. Ooh, 
Okay, I can either spend the food that I have and get a whole bunch of effort, or I can spend a medium effort and get a whole bunch of small effort. So what I'm actually gonna do is, food's kinda tough to come by, I'm not gonna spend my food. I am gonna spend this medium effort because it takes four small efforts to get a medium effort back and I would still have one left over. So this is a net gain, I think it's a good idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend the medium effort to get five small ones. One, two, three, four, five. Especially since those small ones can be converted more easily into, um, into cunning, which is gonna be a major part of my game plan for going after the troll. So that was probably the smartest choice. All right, general actions, not yet. The other thing I need to think about is, do I wanna upgrade my weapon? Actually, I do. I am gonna take the general action to upgrade my weapon because outdoorsman would be cool because you get a bunch of effort. But having a good weapon, eh, that matters. Okay, so let's go ahead and spend a wood, a metal, and an effort to upgrade this knife to a spear. Ta-da, we have a spear. It's not the best weapon in the whole world, but it does me some good. Because now, for two small efforts, I could do two damage. Or for a medium and a small, which I have for right now, I can do three. So it's something, especially since I'm going pretty like poison mastery heavy because I picked up this skill so early. The, the goal is just to have a backup plan. So hopefully this won't be that important, but it's just good to have a weapon. All right, so I don't want to encounter the troll yet. We got plenty of time. Let's do some exploring. Okay, so spend a cunning to gain some stuff. No, I don't have any cunning right now and I'm gonna need it, absolutely not. Um, eh, I don't really care to reveal three cards next to exploration. What we're gonna do is we're gonna spend this time to get some more small effort because I think that's where my time is best spent. Okay, general actions, no, encounter, no, let's explore. Okay. To gain a cunning, I can commit to the next encounter. You know what? We got plenty of time. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna get a cunning out of that, which is great. I'm gonna spend one time. And so commit to next encounter means that I just draw one card off the deck and I have to do it. I can't use it for rest. I can't, like I have to do it. So let's figure out what it's gonna be. All right, okay, yes, I can, I'm happy to spend one time to get two more effort. That's a good deal. My effort is crawling up here, which is definitely promising. I need a little more cunning though, if I can get it. Okay, so no general actions yet. No, let's explore. Ooh, I can't really do either of these. Um, I am just going to, I'm gonna spend one time to rest and take up another effort, just because that's helpful. Don't know to do any generals yet. Don't want to encounter the troll. Let's explore some more. So I can spend one effort to gain two metal, but I already upgraded my weapons, so it's not really that necessary. I could spend a cunning to gain some wood. I don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and spend this time to rest. Rest, effort. So I'm up to 16 small effort. That is pretty good. I'm gonna be able to get at least a good attack in here off of this, but I'd like to do as much as I can. So no general actions yet. Don't encounter the troll. Let's explore. Ooh. Okay, so it's another time for rest thing. I mean, this is good. I just wish I got more stuff. So 18, 19, that's good. All right, let's explore again. So I can spend some effort to gain food. It doesn't cost me any time. I'm gonna go ahead and do that just because, also it's called chasing rodents. I hope that y'all appreciate that I'm literally chasing and eating rats right now. Um, but I think it's probably a good thing to do because having food at the end, like if I use all my effort and then starve, I'm still gonna lose the game, which would really suck after all of this work. So let's do that. We'll explore again. Okay. Um, Let's rest on that. I don't want to spend any cunning. Absolutely not. Pick up some effort. All right, we only have a couple more explorers in here at this point. So let's do it and see what we get. Mm. Nope, let's blow a time and gain an effort. 
All right. I really don't want to get ambushed, but I think, yeah, I'm going to risk this one more time. And that turned out to be a good choice because I can spend two time and gain three more effort. So I'm at like 22 small effort right now. So what that technically means is that I'm stuck at 21. I can't gain more effort than I have room for, but I'm pretty maxed out on small effort. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our general action, which is to get as much cunning as we can. And then we are gonna go into this fight with the troll and see if we can come out victorious. So I have 21 to work with. I definitely want to spend one, two, three, four, five, six for two more. So that's one attack for five, which we're putting down to nine. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and risk this. Let's go down to six for three more cutting. Because then if I can hit him twice and then once with my spear, we can win. And I would like that. So I think that's the best that we can do. Hopefully I don't lose so much effort and not have enough food to the point where, you know, I can't survive. We'll see. We'll see. So this is a risk, but I'd really like to beat this troll. So let's give it a shot. All right, it's time to come at this troll. Um, we cannot sneak around him this time. So there is no trickery step. It's fight or die. Um, and he has a special, which is that he heals one wound before each of his turns. That is not great, but at least we have combat advantage. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and spend one, um, one medium effort and one small effort to hit him for three, 12, 11, 10. Then it's going to be his turn. And we're gonna see he gets to regain one life. Ugh, what a pain. And then he's gonna roll to try to hurt us. So let's see what he manages to do. A three. All right, so he's wounded me and I'm gonna lose two effort. That is not great, um, but it's our turn again. So what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna use poison mastery. We're gonna spend three cunning to hit him for five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now he's at six, but it's his turn again. So he's gonna pop back up to seven. Will he just die already? Ugh. So he's gonna roll and let's see what he gets. Okay, so four, he downgrades my weapon to bare hands for one turn. It's annoying, but it could be worse. So we'll put bare hands on top of my spear for this turn. But fortunately, there is something I can do about that because I'm able to spend three more cunning, one, two, three, to hit him for another five. So he was at seven, now he's at two. This is brutal. Oof, okay, so he's gonna come back up to three and he's gonna come after me. All right, so he rolled a two, that means I lose one small effort uh, I don't think I can beat him. Oh, that stinks. Well, we're going to fight to the end anyway. So I can spend two. I'm off my bare hands now. I'm back on the spear. So I can spend two to hit him for two. But sadly, that puts him at one. So he's going to get another effort. He's going to get another life point back for his next roll roll and I lose one effort. He got me. Oh, what a shame. We were having a really, really good run. I thought we might be able to pull it out right there, but we have lost to the troll. That is not, that's okay though. Cause you know what? I actually really enjoy playing this game, whether I win or lose. It's all about trying to balance your skills and balance, you know, making sure that you can come into a fight with enough effort and energy. And we were really close that time. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed playing Unbroken. And like I said, I personally plan on backing the Kickstarter when it comes in March. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this Let's Play and happy gaming.